think when we lose our identity, we lose who we are, and we lose our, our dedication to promote ourselves and promote the arts, it just brings more and more and more people to our state, and uh, it's been a crying shame. Randall is doing an incredible, incredible job, and uh, he's stuck on one all the time. I couldn't be any more proud of him. And then my wife Kathy was there you know, today, and uh, they gave me this, this artwork that Blinko had come up with in, in regard to a Father's Day present, you know, a, a mug that they had done. And, and uh, they had visited, visited, you know, George Washington's home, and, and many historical sites went into making this mug, and the artist was there, and he was able to describe all that. But it was, it's really good, really, really nice and all that. So we got a little behind. Now, the reason we're here today is just, you know, I, actually it was, the days are all running together, but maybe it was yesterday or the day before that, that Dave and Mark were in my office and we were going over stuff and everything in regard to the revenue numbers and, and everything that we, that we, that, you know, that, that basically got out without us, you know, telling the people about them and everything. But, uh, and, and my issue with that was just this. I mean, you know, it's, it's okay to talk about it, but I, didn't, I, I just hadn't ever really seen a situation where that there had been a press release come from the Senate on this. But, but nevertheless, it did. And so, but, to, but there's way more to the story, and that's what we were waiting to tell. Now, stay with me just a second. M many people, well, hopefully not many, but some are critical of the fact that, that I want us to be proud of what's going on. Now, I want to tell the good stories. And people say, well, justice is just patting himself on the back and everything, and he does it and everything. Listen, we absolutely need to be really proud of what we're doing. And if you think it's justice, you're just way out in left field. You know, really, at the end of the day, if we can't be proud of these numbers, we really can't probably be proud of anything. So the other thing, I, you know, well, never mind. I think what we should do is we should let these superstars explain the numbers, and then I'll come back in, answer your questions, and I'd like, I'd like to comment one, on one, one other thing. And that's just this, this the, the state, our state is doing phenomenal. That's all there is to it. Now, does that mean we've still not got a lot of people out there that we need to help? Without any question. I'm going crazy to make sure that we get every single one of these homes where these people were just ravished by the flood that we get every single last one of them under construction before the end of the year. I am going crazy about that and everything. And the, sure, there's people out there that we are still looking for real help. And there's still real opportunity out there and real job opportunity for more and more and more to come, thousands more to come to West Virginia. You know. I also have to say this, you know, I see our Secretary of Transportation, I see our Deputy Secretary, you know, with us here today in Bird White and Jimmy Riston. And what they're doing, you know, in regard to the potholes and the roads all over this place, I, absolutely. A guy yesterday said, for God's sakes of living, it took me 45 minutes to get home from Princeton on Sunday. And, and they said, and they said, and we see crew after crew out working on Saturdays, you know. And so, so it's amazing what's happening. It's good stuff, and we want to just keep pouring it on. But these numbers are really special, and I'll let them explain and go. But let's let's kind of un, unveil the, the 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 stuff that let's let's do them all. Let's go slow. Let me, let, me, let me interrupt you. Let me explain this right here. I think what you'll hear is from 2007 to 2017. For 10 years, 10 years, our state had an average growth rate of less than 1%. For 10 years. 
Now, along came a guy in this 2017 period, but for 10 years prior to that, less than 1%. Now go. Now get this. In 2019, for the last 10 months, we have averaged 11.5%. Now, the thing that is really profound about this, and they'll tell you more about this, and I hope they'll read the statement, they had to get special permission from this agency that comes out with this, but for, for 2019, 10 months, 11.5%, it is the highest in state history general revenues. Now, I'm going to tell you, when you get the highest in state history, you've got to feel pretty good about it, and there's got to be a reason to come in here and talk about it. And the other thing is the rating agency says that our growth rate in West Virginia, in, I keep saying it, in West Virginia, in West Virginia is the second highest growth rate in the country. Flip the other one over, please. And these are all our sources of revenue, and I'm not going to go through all that. But what they'll tell you, these people will tell you that it will total in excess or, or probably approaching $500 million above, above what we're thinking. Now, let me just say just this, and then I'll turn it over to them. And I want you to pay really close attention to me. I really, really want you to listen really hard to this. From the media standpoint, the legislature standpoint, for maybe people that are out in the wilderness that just don't know any better and they only know what they hear, why do you want Jim Justice to be them? Why do you want me to be them? And let me explain what I mean by that. You want me to sit over there at the mansion and get gold stars for just sitting there? You want me to do what's been done in the past? Do you really want to be occupied with where I sleep at night? Do you want to be a little bubble, a little bubble of people that is negativity shoots out in every direction known to man? Is that what you really want me to be? I can't be that. There's not a chance that I've ever, ever taken any article or any document or anything out of, this, uh, out of the, the state government and taken it home with me or anything. I don't do that. I don't do that. But I, I am out as a laborer, and it's working. It's working like it's never worked before, ever. If you think I'm going to apologize to you or, or I'm going to even comment on, well, Governor, you know, why aren't you at the mansion more? Whether I'm everywhere more. Everywhere. That's telling you. For God's sakes living, you don't want this. You want that. It's just as simple as that. You don't want this. You had this for 10 years. You don't want this. You want that. Why do you want me to be them? That's your question. Why do you want me to be them? And you know what? And now I'm going to read to you just one little thing from the greatest book that's ever written, our Bible. Now, there was a time, there was a time when Jesus was with his disciples and a bunch of other people. But to me, this is, this is the whole tale tale of the thing. He said, all of you like to gather around. All of you like to gather around in a place where you can be fed and you can be, have drink and whatever. But then he said this. He said, and I got to really stretch to be able to see it. Then saith he unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. I think what he's saying. The harvest is out there in the field. What are all y'all doing right here? What are you doing? What are you doing? 
the harvest is in the field and the laborers are few. I'm in the field. I'm in the field every day. That's what I do. That's my result. That's their result. I'll turn it over to y'all. Thank you, Governor. Um, it's June, and in the middle of June, uh, the Department of Revenue does a lot of things, and one of the most important things we do is that we sit and we talk to the bond rating agencies in New York City and take a hard look at the fiscal year and how we're doing and where we've been in the past. So this is the time of year where we take a real hard look at the state's finances in general. And West Virginia in fiscal year 2019 has had probably the most extraordinary year in the history of this state with respect to revenue. The numbers do not lie. As the governor pointed out there a few minutes ago, we did a look back, Mark Muco did, from 2007 to 2017. If you do the average revenue growth rate for those years, the growth rate as shown on this poster was 0.8%. To put that in dollars, that was $314 million of revenue growth over a 10-year period. That's cumulative. Now, lay that number here. Now think about where we are today. On May 31st, 11 months into this fiscal year, our revenue growth rate at the end of May was 11.8%. That number there is 11.5 because that's the end of April. And I'll tell you why here in a minute. 11.8% translated into revenue growth this year of $452.6 million. So in this year alone, we have gained $452.6 million of revenue versus $314 million for 10 years between 2007 in 2017. That's 150 percent in one year of what we did in 10 years from 2007 to 17. Now, the other piece of news that's very important, and that's why it says 11.5 on that poster, at the end of April, we are members of an organization called the National Association of State Budget Officers, and their role is to go out and survey all the states. And we get emails, and we, we're part of that, that service of monitoring what the other states are doing. Out of the 50 states, there were, there were five at the end of April that had double-digit growth. Five out of 50. That's 10 percent or more. West Virginia's growth at the end of April was 11.5 percent, which made us the second largest growth rate this year in the whole United States of America. The only state that got ahead of us, and we'll catch them next year, I hope, is Oklahoma. But we are second in the country on growth rate this year. We set an all-time record. We're on target to grow our revenues this year by about $500 million, because we still have the month of June to count up. As far as... David, let me... Yes, look. sir. Do you, this, this just came to me yesterday or the day before. But Dave came and said, they have to get special permission from whomever that agency is. NASBO. And, and they, they, do you have that quote? Do all, did y'all bring that? Uh, we have it here on the iPhone. Yeah. Yeah. They, we had to you get permission should, from them to, to release the yeah, information. Y'all should, should hear this quote. It, it's exactly what he's saying. But they had to get special permission from this agency, and this agency gave us the quote. And then Dave brought it over and gave it to me at the mansion, and uh, I, it was, okay, here's the quote that we had to receive written permission to release. In a review of published state April 2019 revenue collection reports, the National Association of State Budget Officers have identified five states with double-digit growth in their general revenue fund for the last 10 months. Oklahoma at 18.5%, West Virginia at 11.5%, New Jersey 11.2%, Montana and South Carolina at 10%.
and we had to get permission. This is embargoed information from this organization, but it puts in context how well we've done here this year. This year will go down in history, no question about it. When you look at revenue growth of $500 million on a budget of about 4.6, 4.7 billion, and you see that kind of revenue growth, that has never happened. May never happen again, I hope it will. I think next year it might. But this is, like I said, a historic year. We also went back and we looked at where we started and where we are today. We started in January of 17 when Governor Justice took office and we looked at the projections for West Virginia's revenue growth that were on record when we started here in January of 17. We have now revised those estimates based on the kind of information and the kind of revenue growth that we have. So we have the actual numbers for 18 and then we were close to having the final number for 19 and then we projected 20, 21 and 22. Based on these new projections that were done recently because our revenues are so strong, West Virginia will receive in that five year period almost $1.8 billion dollars in new revenue over that five-year period. That's compared today what our projections are and what our record is versus 30 months ago when Governor Justice took office. That's new revenue and it completely based on all the data that we've seen here. Where is this revenue coming from? The severance tax trends since we took office here and since the governor took office are extraordinary. Coal severance revenue has improved by 37 percent since January of 17. Non-manufacturing exports, and that's mostly coal exports, have risen from 1.5 billion to 3.9 billion. Percentage obviously very large. Natural gas severance tax collection since Governor Justice took office has gone up from 63.9 to 153 million, and oil severance tax collection has gone from 11.6 to 36 million. The re severance tax revenue has more than doubled in all segments, coal, natural gas, and oil severance tax. This year alone, fiscal year 19, severance tax is up 32.2% just in this fiscal year alone. Other revenue sources that have done so well, our corporate net income tax is up 75.3% year to date. Our personal income tax, which means West Virginians are earning more money, is up $160 million or 9.2%. Our sales tax is up 10.5%. And we set a record this year for growth in our sales tax revenue as well. And that is the greatest increase in sales tax in single year in West Virginia's history. And Mark's quick to point out, as he always is, in a year we didn't have a tax increase because you have to take out the years that we added tax increase. You're right on that, Mark. Um, other things that we've done in the last 30 months, there's been no use of the rainy day fund at all to balance the budget. If you remember, there were several years preceding these fiscal years when Governor Justice came aboard where the rainy day fund was used to balance the budget by necessity. That has not happened and is not going to happen in fiscal year 19. Two consecutive average 5% pay raises, $105 million additional contribution to PEIA, and this this next point needs to be said over and over. The reason we're getting the bond ratings we're getting is because of numbers like these. When we took our bonds to market last June, a year ago, for $800 million worth of bonds, the state received $913 million. That's $113 million premium that we are going to use for roads based on how good our bond ratings are based on these excellent economic numbers. We're going through, as I said earlier, with Mitt Moody, Standard and & Poor's, and Fitch, they're looking at these numbers today. Matter of fact, Mark Muko and I tomorrow 
have to send a, a number of financial reports to Moody's so they can do our, their annual review of our state's financial condition. And last but not least, we've eliminated the personal income tax on military pensions. So we're able to give some tax relief at the same time to have these types of numbers. So anybody, and again, Mark and I are numbers guys, Department of Revenue, we look at numbers. That's all we look at. We don't look at political things. We look at numbers. These numbers are absolutely historic. And West Virginians collectively should be very proud of what's occurred here in the last two and a half years. Uh, like I said, when we went back and we looked at what we started with in January of 17, we're projecting $1.8 billion more revenue today than we projected 30 months ago. So with that, that's all the numbers I've got for today, Governor. I'll, I'll turn it back over to you if Mark wants to add anything. Uh, Mark, do you want to add anything? Okay. He schooled me well. I, I would like to add just this, that we're getting ready to go back out on another bond deal. And, and when we go back out, you know, based on those numbers, based on the confidence the rating agencies have in us, we're going to end up with extra money again. And when we end up with extra money again, we can just put more and more, 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 more and more money into fixing the roads and the highways. And, and, uh, and before you know it, this, this scourge that tell it like it is that I inherited, I mean, this road just didn't get this way. I mean, we neglected for decades and everything, and, 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 but we're going to fix them. We're going to fix them. We've got two great superstars right there, and uh, we're after it. That's all there is to it. I said, jokingly, you know, the potholes are running from us now because they see the paving machines coming. And, uh, and so, and, and they are running from us. So, so I, 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 I couldn't be happier. And, and I don't, I don't, I, I want us all to know this. You know, they're just over there, they gave me a, a wonderful Father's Day, you know, uh, piece from Blinko. And I said this, and I, I want us to just digest just this. Father's Day is a wonderful occasion, and I was very, very appreciative. But there's a bunch of people, a bunch of kids, and a bunch of people out there in the wilderness and everything, all through West Virginia, that they don't know who their father is, or they don't know where their father is. And for all those, we need to keep those in our prayers we're getting better. We're getting better with leaps and bounds. To be perfectly honest, you know, it frustrates me to death when somebody, you know, says something that, that I consider just not very bright. When you, when you, when you come up with, with things like, well, where'd you sleep last night? Or what'd you do this? Or what'd you do that? And everything. I mean, really, really, this is my job. That's my job. That's all there is to it. The numbers speak for themselves. You know my job. That's my job. Now, on the other hand, though, we still got people to help, but we got things to do, and we want to just keep moving. And so uh, I wish to goodness that we could, we could just know this, that uh, I'm really... I, could be, I couldn't be any more prouder of that as a West Virginian, but I couldn't be any more prouder of that to represent the Republican Party and say, we, we need to lead. We need to move forward. And we need to be together. We don't need to be hitting at each other. We need to be together and everything and move forward. But I keep, I keep going back to this last thing and then I'll shut up. I've said it to him blue green. It doesn't really matter if we're Democrats or independents or Republicans. At the end of the day, we're West Virginians. And we got too many people on the outside that are throwing rocks at us, and we need absolutely to understand that we need to first and foremost do the greatest thing in the world for West Virginians every day. You know, Kathy grew up in Prosperity, West Virginia. You know, for crying out loud, a little 4-H kid, in some way she puts up with me, and this is all we know. This is all we do, and we love it. And so... Uh, and we love our people. So anyway, a great day to celebrate. Great day.
we'll take your questions. Okay, we're done. <laughs>